We are joined at the podium by Texas A&M head coach Buzz Williams in this fifth season. Coach and Aggies has them in the NCAA tournament for the second straight season. Coach will let you start us uh, with a statement, and then we'll open it up for questions. We'll just go straight, go straight to questions. Uh, we'll start in the back and then come over to the center here. Coach Colin Cody, WRG here in Memphis. Um, obviously, being in the league for five years and winning SEC Coach of the Year, um, that league, eight teams are playing in the postseason now. What did that schedule do for you all to prepare you for this March? Well, it's the first time we have done the schedule that we've done in the non-conference uh, to add it to what the SEC has become over the last five years. I think we've played 14 games this season against teams that are in the NCAA tournament. So we've had practice. We haven't always done well, but the league continues to improve and the margin continues to shrink. And um, whether it's eight teams or every coach in every league will say they need more, but um, hopefully the league will do well over the next few weeks. And that's probably what speaks the loudest. Went to the center. Swarneman, Houston Chronicle. Buzz, what would it mean for your program to get a win in the NCAA postseason? Yeah, I, we would be grateful. Uh, we're, we're thankful to be here uh, after all that's transpired, as you know, over the last month or so. Um, and selfishly, I'd just like, to, like it to keep going to be able to continue to hang around these guys. Uh, it's been remarkable, the lessons that we've learned, the resiliency that they've shown, the togetherness, the connectivity. Um, we'll have our hands full against Nebraska, a unique opponent, very well coached uh, with really, really skilled players, but for a multitude of reasons, like every other coach, Brent, we'd like to keep playing. Front. Travis Brown with the Eagle. Uh, Buzz, what um, what has Eli kind of meant to this team, especially what he's, I think you mentioned it in one of your last ones, what he's done off the court, on the bench with that? Yeah, I just admire him so much. And to be honest with you, Travis, um, I think there has been a crescendo within the program for the respect that we have towards him. Played a lot of minutes, shot a lot of balls, had a lot of success throughout his college career. And then for the most part, hasn't played. Um, he's shooting 6% from three. And he may be the most respected player that I've ever coached who knows he's not going to play, and the players know he's not going to play. And he sat in my seat as much as I have over the last two weeks. I was telling his dad, his dad called me uh, yesterday, and I said, <clears throat> we'll have time to discuss later, and uh, he'll, he can go play somewhere because he has such an ability to score. But his calling is coaching because his ability to have an impact. You know, normally you, when you think of leaders, you think of the guys that are maybe the best players, sometimes the oldest players. And in our program, we don't ever deem captains. I, I never have done that. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but he's only been with us nine months. Doesn't know anything about what we're doing committed on Zoom, never took an official visit. And he just has great belief in who we are and his ability to inspire, knowing that he's not going to be able to participate. I think that's really hard to do as a competitor. And I think he's going to have a very successful coaching career whenever he's done. SB works. Uh, is it surprise you all he was able to find a talent like Kisei across the, the globe for Nebraska? Yeah, they're, um, they run pretty offense. Um, you know, I can't pronounce all of their names. I know their numbers. Obviously, when Coach was at Iowa State, I was at Marquette. And then uh, he coached Jimmy when he was with the Bulls. So I'm familiar with 
uh, the savant that he is offensively. And just watching them, you don't want to play against them, but just watching them, there is for sure envy as a coach. Like, I wish I could do that. You know, I wish I could get our players to read and react the way they do. Very unique style of play. I mean, 51's their point guard and leads their team in assists. Um, 50% of their shots are from three. I mean, they're, they're fun to watch. And they obviously they cause the opposition a lot of stress because of how they play. And he was probably at the forefront of the transfer portal before it was the transfer portal. Uh, but a lot of their success at Iowa State way back when, that was an eternity ago it seems, were kids that set out and then finished their eligibility there. But I think a lot of his style of play uh, in what they do in transition, what they do in secondary, they were doing some of that at Iowa State. They were for sure doing some of that with the Bulls. And then I think it's just con continued to evolve with the skill set of the guys that he has this year. And the center? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Olin Buchanan, Tech, Sags. Maybe you touched on this a little bit in your uh, previous answer, Buzz, but uh, Wade compared or he, he said that Nebraska kind of reminds him of Alabama. I wonder if you think that's a good comparison. Are there any other teams that y'all played that maybe fits more of what y'all have seen uh, or what you've seen out, uh, in Nebraska? There, there is some uh, residue of how Alabama plays. They're fast. They're not as fast as Alabama, uh, but percentage of shots from three eerily similar to Alabama. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you, if we've – played a team that combines the pace at which they prefer to play along with the flow or the prettiness or the the style. Uh, and for sure we haven't played anyone whose roster is built the way theirs, theirs is. Our, our next three, Coach, will be to our right. One, two, three. Okay. James Fletcher from On3. Your players were just up there, and they talked extensively about their relationship with you. Tyrese talked about wanting to be as consistent as you in life. Uh, Boots had great things to say about how much time you spend with them, sacrificing time with your family. Mm. Uh, what does your relationship with this group of guys in particular mean to you off the basketball court? Yeah, everything. Um, this is the wrong thing to say on this platform. Basketball has very little, if anything, to do with it. It's just kind of what brought us together. Um, time will multiply whatever you feed it. And that's specific to ball, but I think that's specific to life. And I for sure think that's what applies to relationships. So for Boots to say that, I, I appreciate it. Uh, I don't ask any of our guys those sorts of questions when I spend time with them. I'm just talking to them about them. Um, I, I think that I hope that uh, what I model may help their life. I think good habits with time, it becomes your ally. And so I just try to give them as much time of my time as I can. I, I coach less than I ever have, uh, but I spend more time with the people within the organization, the young adults and the old adults. And in this model of college athletics, it's the one thing that is refreshing to me. It's nourishing to me. I, I think there is some lasting power to that. I don't know who was up here or what they said, but those are my guys, and I, I love them. And uh, it's not dependent upon if they make a shot or if we win tomorrow. I mean, uh, follow up here if I can. Uh, the transfer portal opened just before the NCAA tournament. What are your thoughts on that? What has it done for you and your staff having to balance those two things? Yeah, uh, closed mouths don't catch flies. So I got to be careful what I say. Uh, the timing is the timing is hard, and um, I'm not critiquing it. All the smart people make all the decisions. I'm not in that group, nor should I be. Uh, but it is a delicate deal. 
you go to selection Sunday and then you wake up early Monday morning to keep studying and you need to send texts and you need to make calls. And I'm like, uh, is there any way we could try to win on Friday? And it, it somewhat, I, I don't want to critique it because there's kids that are here that came from the transfer portal. But there's, there probably needs to be a group of smart people that try to figure out a better calendar. We're still following some archaic rules in a different model that probably are not congruent with where we're at in 2024. We're right, in our last five minutes. We'll go here, then up front, and then back there. Uh, Buzz, Mark Passwaters with Rivals. Um, you have said more than once that you want to run an offense that kind of mucks things up. And you said that Nebraska has a pretty offense. Lately, you guys have run a pretty offense. There's been a lot more tempo. What changed? Has that just been something that you have consciously decided that you guys want to run? Or has it just been something that has worked out? Uh, maybe a little bit of both. Um, I, I think over the course of our tenure at A&M and elsewhere, I think we've tried to adapt to whatever gives our guys the best chance. And I think that that takes time for me to figure out. And sometimes I'm a little too slow in figuring it out. But I also think it takes time for the guys to have comfort in it. I think we've done a much better job defensively. Um, which has led to us being able to play with more pace at the beginning of the shot clock, which has to some degree led to us getting fouled more often, which for us, if we can get fouled more often and the possession starts from a dead ball, defensively we're able to muck it up. We're probably better mucking it up defensively than we are offensively, but we for sure need our offense to help our defense. But I think over the last three weeks, in some respects, our defense has helped our offense, and that would be what I would contribute it to the most. Mike from the Richmond Times Dispatch, good to see you. Um, uh, how has your relationship with Henry Coleman grown over the years, and how has he developed on the court? Uh, he's special. Um, I know his name is Henry, but I think he's Barack Obama. Um, I think God has an anointing on his life that is far superior to ball. Uh, he's the only two-time men's basketball committee member Commissioner Sankey has ever appointed in any sport. Uh, obviously, he's the only men's basketball representative in NCAA among all Division I schools. Um, he's progressed as a player, but I think the, the playing part is just a, a small ingredient. Uh, obviously, my relationship goes back with he and his family as long as I've known you. Um, you know, we stopped recruiting him at Virginia Tech, and I told Henry that long before I ever came here. Um, Mr. Coleman played for coach, as you know. Miss Coleman graduated from UVA Law School. And um, I remember uh, one morning I was at Trinity and Coach Williams uh, was with me, and he was like, Buzz, I'm wasting my time up here. This is coach. And I said, coach, you're not wasting your time. He goes, why are you saying that? He's going to go with you. And I said, coach, he's not coming to Virginia Tech because as soon as you leave, I'm going to tell him we're not recruiting him anymore. He goes, what? I said, coach, he's either going to go with you or he's going to go to Duke. He said, why? I said, because that kid is special and he's never going to choose sides between his mom and his dad. He's never going to tell his mom he's going to play at Tech, and he's never going to tell his dad he's going to UVA. So I'm the one wasting time. So if you hurry up and finish with him or let me go first, I'll tell him, and then your conversation will go better. So um, obviously the pandemic was brutal for us um, at Texas A&M. Men's basketball, pardon me if I didn't clarify that the right way. Um, so we, when he went in the portal, his mom called. And I said, Miss Coleman, we cannot waste time. I just had my second losing record in the history of my career in conference play. Can't waste time. So I'm not calling Henry. You're calling Henry. And if you want to have a Zoom, he has to commit. And then we'll just handle it like that. 
good talking to you. I don't expect to hear from you again. His family is ultra, ultra close. And of course, I know all of them. And like his impact for us in year number one, and, and if you, I know you don't know our team, but there's, there's four guys that came at the same time following the pandemic, and you can argue that it has been ultra successful, and Henry's for sure at the beginning of that list. All right, I know we had more questions, but we're actually out of time. Coach, Thanks. thank you, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you.